Welcome to another episode of Debate That, where we discuss relationships, pop culture, social issues, and much more. My name is Jay. And I'm May. And I'm Sean. And before we get started, I just wanted to um, send our thoughts and our prayers to everyone dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I understand how serious it is and practicing uh, social distancing is kind of tough right now because we're used to being out and about, but it can truly save lives. So um, because of this virus aggressive nature, we just want to make sure that we're being careful and just understanding that these people that are on the front lines, the um, frontline workers, first responders, the essential workers, like they're really putting their lives at risk. So for those of us who have to stay home, just make sure that we're actually doing that so we can save everybody's life um, and we can get past this thing and get on and get back to enjoying life again. So um, just be careful out there, be safe, take care of yourselves and um, just please, please just do whatever you can to, so we can get past this. Uh, peace, love and blessing and you all just be safe. Um, now, Amsterdamus, what we got for the question? Today's question is, what is culture appropriation and is it ever acceptable? So initial thoughts, initial thoughts, Nay. What is cultural appropriation or misappropriation? Uh, I like to go by the actual definition uh, where one culture takes on certain customs from another culture. John? I mean, it's a, it's kind of a touchy to topic. You know what I mean? It has its, I think it all depends. I mean, there's a lot of things that can be discussed on that. So, I mean, I'm anxious to see, of course, where we go with it. Um, Kardashians, that, that's my answer. Um, I said that. that. That's my answer. I said that in my head. I just said that. Appropriation, the whole topic that... For me, is it ever acceptable? Like, <clears throat> it depends because I, for certain things, I mean, I consider it cultural appropriation. So to give you an example um, of it, somebody who grew up in that culture, like I don't consider it cultural appropriation if that's what you know. And if you're uh, of another ethnicity and that's the only thing that you know, I mean, I don't, I don't see how that would be cultural appropriation at that point. Like, it, I don't know. What do y'all think? So hold up. I actually just pulled up on Google the actual definition because I think this is uh, important. Cultural appropriation at times also phrased cultural misappropriation is the adoption of elements of one culture by members of another culture. That's the actual definition. I think that our media, our society has turned that terminology into something else. I don't think when reading the actual definition, it's something that is bad, but I think that media and society has blown it up and turning into something else. So when we think of that, it's like, ooh, you know, like it, it doesn't have a good meaning behind it. It doesn't have a good connotation behind it because when I hear that term, I think, Someone stole someone else's culture, cultural ideas, cultural elements, cultural customs, and it's using it as their own without then in turn saying, hey, this came from such and such. So you spoke about Kardashians, and that's the first thing that comes to mind for me. For me, you know, Kim, and nothing against Kardashians because I actually like them. <laughs> she comes rocking her braids the past couple years and everybody's like, yo, these are the Kim K braids. These are the Kim K tribal braids. This is that, 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 uh, no. <laughs> we as a black culture have been rocking those braids all of our lives and beyond. Our ancestors were braiding up their kids' hair and the next generations and the generations before then, it did not start with Kim K. It didn't start with Alicia Keys when she was rocking braids before Kim K. So you have these celebrities that take on these elements from different cultures. And of course, Kim K is not black. 
So saying that is Kim K braids or she started it. Nah, you don't get that credit. So what about what about somebody who who grew up in the culture? Like that's what they were around from childhood on. See, I don't have an issue with that. I don't even have an issue with Kim K wearing braids or anybody who's not a part of the culture wearing braids. If like to your question, you grew up in a certain environment that is not of your, I guess, genetic identity. Uh, here's your, here's the example. A white girl grew around black, a white girl grew up around black girls all of her life. So in turn, she loves wearing braids. She loves, you know, the music, the men, all of the above. And that's okay. That's what you grew up around. I don't know if it would be appropriate for you to be walking around saying, yeah, I started this. No, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Like, like for me, like, I don't, I don't have an issue with the, uh, if a person grew up in the culture, like if they grew up in the culture and that's all they know, then of course that's what they're going to, that's what they're going to emulate. Right. Cause that's what they grew up all their life. So I don't have a problem with that. I just have a problem with people who do it. And then when something goes wrong, now all of a sudden, like they just toss it to the side. And I, I mean, I've seen that happen with uh, Bieber. I've seen that happen with Molly Cyrus. Um, and then they just toss it to the side and then go about their way. But they were never a part of that, a part of that in, in the beginning. Like they, they weren't all in. So it's like if something happens and something goes down, you're not just tossing it out the window because now it no longer helps me anymore. So mm -hmm. and then I just move on. So what what do you think about like what do you think, Sean, what do you think about like the the Justin Bieber and Molly Cyrus deal? Like I said, with cultural, when it comes down to it, I mean, you just bottom line, you got to be authentic. If it's not authentic. I mean, people are going to be able to read through you. Right. But like I said, I mean, it's been going on since day one. Everybody knows, you know, I mean, obviously I love everybody. I love every race, but we move the needle on pretty much everything. So at that point, if people are trying to catch a wave, you know, just make sure they benefit off of whatever's going on at the moment. I mean, like you said, and then hop out when something goes wrong or if you're not getting the same love that you thought you should have been, you was getting from day one when you started it. So now you want to be around, you know, your different, you know, powerful black people, you know what I mean? To kind of give you that clout to say, okay, well, I'm down, but technically, like I said, something pop off. You ain't down. You're gone. Right. So, so how can you tell? How can you tell when somebody's authentic? Because as Jay brought up with Miley Cyrus and Justin Bieber, you know, Miley Cyrus got a stamp of an approval from Pharrell to be like this hip hop person who knew hip hop. And then she ended up after she made her her millions off of that twerk stuff that people kind of dubbed that she started it, which she didn't. And then she went back and said she she in turn said hip hop was all about degrading women and all this. How can you tell that somebody's authentic after they've gotten a stamp of an approval? Because it comes down to, like Jay said, I mean, if you're born in it and you grew up with it, as Nay said as well, not just because the producer, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, they see an opportunity as well. So I would honestly say maybe Pharrell gave that stamp of approval. I would say an error because she didn't grow up that way. You know what I mean? It's a whole different ball game for her. Mm -hmm. But you see the opportunity that you can capitalize off of putting somebody in that light to try to walk that light. But as you see, most of them can't walk it. You know what I mean? They only can walk it for a short period of time. And then, like you said, when them trials and tribulations come and you start seeing them true colors, I mean, honestly, it's a natural ability to be able to see, okay, well, I understand where this person coming from. I can see how I got a homeboy now who, like I said, I mean, he white, but he grew up in Orlando <laughs> around everybody who's a brother. You know what I mean? His kids, all of that stuff, they all mix. 
So at the end of the day, like I said, when you say authentic, I mean, it's pure. There's no question in it. You know what I mean? You can see it. You see how a person move. And then again, they acknowledge, like you said, if he gave that stamp of approval, she should acknowledge the fact that, hey, you know what I mean? I'm doing this because of this. You know what I mean? Or I'm stepping in this lane because Pharrell gave me the opportunity to do blah, blah, blah. Not act like you're carrying it and that you kind of paved the way for somebody. And that's Dame Dash biggest argument when it comes down to, you know, these execs in the offices picking up the culture and pretty much trying to run with it and make it their own and basically pimp us. <laughs> Is there a double standard when it comes to culture appropriation? Because we talked about Miley Cyrus, quote unquote, appropriating hip hop culture. What about Lil Nas X? Would he be considered culture appropriating country culture? So I got something on that, on both of those. Back to the other question. I do. Um, so. I don't. I, it, it when a person when you know a person is authentic. When you know a person is authentic is when certain situations are going to come up, and when those situations come up, that's going to let you know if a person is is true to uh, who they say they are, or if they're just using this um, to do to as a ploy to get money or do whatever they need to do. So cultural appropriation, like little Nas X. That's a good question. But if, if like Eminem, Eminem is a good example. That's a good example. Eminem, Eminem, I don't, he didn't, I don't think Eminem grew up in the culture, but he always pays his respects to right. the people who right. came before him. So even if, even if he um, didn't grow up, he, he grew, he say he grew up in the trailer park or whatever. So even if that is the case, he, he's never out here disrespecting the people who came before him. You should hear his list of people that he loved, his his artists that he loved. And so it's okay if if you're if he's able to rap and he's nice, but he's saying that I learned this from these people. Mm -hmm. Like I have no problem with that. Yeah. Like, so, go my ahead. Bad, my bad to cut you off. So speaking on M for an example, on that last album of Royce Five Nine. Shout out to Royce and M. But he actually spoke on it when it came down to even when you get to a person like Elvis Presley. You know what I mean? And you're talking about all of the black people who started, like I said, these sounds and everything like that, but wouldn't get the recognition or the play or the airtime. So Elvis is looking like the, the starter and the, he's the one who's moving the needle on that culture. You know what I mean? Versus the people who really started it just didn't have the opportunity. They wouldn't give them that light to say, hey, you know, this is what we started. This is what we've been doing for however many years before Elvis even became Elvis. You know what I mean? And like I said, it's highway robbery, but in pays homage, like you said, he'll go through that list and say, you know, this person, these people started this, you know, Elvis didn't start this. You know, so it's it's. It can be a double standard, but like I said, we got a lot of obstacles that we got to climb. But back to that question that, that Nam Shadamas just, what, what he was talking about, think about it. Lil Nas X mm -hmm. goes and makes a country music song, mm -hmm. right? Now, now, I'm not sure if Billy Ray Cyrus said he wanted to do the remix with him or he asked Billy Ray Cyrus to do the remix with him. Now, is that considered cultural appropriation when it comes to that country culture? No, I mean, Nelly did it. And I mean, you got Kid Rock who want to hang with Snoop, you know what I mean, since day one. Yeah. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, when Nelly crossed over with it first, you know what I mean? And we you put our own on it, huh? The song he did with Tim McGraw? Yeah. yeah. No, that song was fire, though. It was. But you see, we put, we put our own flag on there. We'll listen to it after we finish. <laughs> we put, hey, we put our own swag on it. So it ain't like we tried to really cross over into it. We just basically almost kind of gave them a light into our world as well. But you is it I mean? not okay to, I don't think it is a bad thing. It's not. To, like, 
embrace other elements of other cultures. That is not the bad, that's not a bad thing. I don't, like, that's why I keep saying, I feel like cultural appropriation or misappropriation, whichever way, because I know the word can be intertwined, use intertwining, like, it's, it's not really a bad thing. Again, I think that media and society has created this negativity behind the terminology. Because if you want to embrace someone else's culture or enjoy elements of someone else's culture, fine, that's cool, that's dope, that's what's up. If you are claiming it as your own and saying that you did it first, I think that's where the problem lies. Or if media is saying you did it first and you're not saying, hey, like this ain't what... I, I was inspired. This is not, I didn't start this. I was inspired and I like it. Like, I think that's where the problem lies. If you can't speak out of your mouth and verbalize and say, yo, this, 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 is, this credit doesn't belong to me. It belongs to whoever. Mm -hmm. So with that double standard, do we only talk about it when it affects us? Because you bring up the Kardashians mm -hmm. and you talk about the Kardashian braids. It's one thing to embrace it, and it's another thing not to give credit. But nobody say anything about Beyonce when she wears blonde, straight, curly hair or whatever. Like, it, yeah, she's wearing weave. Yeah, but it's blonde. Say, uh, I don't. So I have never heard Beyonce say, "I started blonde weave." I didn't hear Beyonce or any black celebrity say, "Hey, we started," you know. We started the weed game. We st well, or we started the blonde weed game. Like I, I don't know. I think that as a culture, as a black woman, we came in the game because our natural hair wasn't accepted. So we started wearing wigs. We started doing uh, braiding our hair with extensions, and we started incorporating those things so we would be accepted more from society. That's where weave and all that stuff came into play. So does it matter if wearing they, the blonde hair, but if you want to look at the color, like, all right, hey, it's weave. Let me play with some color. I don't know that we're like, oh, we were wearing blonde hair first. No, because we know it naturally doesn't grow out of our hair. So should yeah. she give credit to somebody and say, oh, I got the idea from this person? Or because her not saying that. To her attention, so hey, Beyonce, did you, you know, you, you look awesome in your uh, golden locks. Would you say you started this? No. Like, why would she say, yeah, I started this? Like, she should automatically or anybody should say no. Like. So I think it's harder when you try to say it, when you're asking about a color of hair. Of hair. You know what I mean? Because you got platinum out there, you got red, you know what I mean? You got purple. And ain't nobody start that really, you know what I mean? I like I said, we, we moved the we moved the needle on, like I said, almost I would say pretty much everything. You know what I mean? And like I said, I can't you can't really determine that part on the color of the hair. Now if she had blonde, you know, dreadlocks or something, you know what I mean? At that point, it's just like I said, a color, but we know where the dreadlocks stem from, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Well, I see. I see where you guys are are coming from, like, like with Beyonce and the hair and the different colors. Because I've seen some wild colors in some people's hair, and you know, green. I don't know what you would uh, attribute that to, but I've seen lime green hair and all kinds of hair. So I think what we really outsource is the culture, and 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 we set a lot of trends for a lot of things. Uh, but I think we got to take, I think we got to harness that and, and make it our own. And, you know, sometimes we just got to go out there and say uh, that didn't start here. It started here. But like to Nay's point, that media, it's that media me. is a beast, man. When it, it takes is. over and says, this person created this. And if you see it enough times, you believe it. You kind of don't you believe that happen. Kim K is walking around saying, I started this trend. I, I don't believe so. No. I honestly don't. I mean, you look at some of them old school rappers too back in the day, like Kwame and all of them cats who had like 
the fresh high top with the blonde patch in it, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Or we're dying to hair different colors way back then. If you look at the hip hop culture, and it was just something fly, whether it was parts dying one side of it, you know, do a half moon and dye one side blonde. I mean, that's just how we move because we're able to finesse it. And like I said, it worked. I mean, God <laughs> blessed us with talents to make stuff work. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at that point, I mean, we've been doing that. We've been doing the colors before the colors became what they are today. Well, I guess you're right, because we've been taking something and uh, taking nothing and making it something. Bro, they used to die with Kool-Aid back in the day. Straight <laughs> up. <laughs> I would be great. Because I and I remember uh I remember my homegirls, she used to, and, and this is a she's a she's a white girl. She used to dye her hair by putting lemon juice and making sure she was in the sun all day. You know, there's so many different ways that we used to do things. I mean, look at my hair right now. I'm rocking my natural hair, but I got these two little ninja buns going on. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that came from the Harajuku culture, you know, the Asian. You know, you're out here looking like Chung Lee. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. I love it. My daughter loves when I take her braids and I put them in two ninja buns and, you know, and again, I don't know how far back this trend goes, but from my understanding, this is Harajuku girls, you know, they were wearing their hair and all kind of buns and different things. And that's dope. But I'm not walking around saying I started it. But they used to be in Africa, too. It, like they'll, you'll see, even if you just went to YouTube or the Discovery Channel, I mean, you'll see that women used to dye their hair with red clay and all of that yeah. stuff. So. At that point, like I said, we've been doing it. You know what I mean? No, nah, that's good. Go ahead. No. Nah. I, I was just going to say, do you think with the whole term of culture vulture coming up and culture appropriation, do you think black people makes it easier for their culture to be appropriated by other ethnicities because maybe they don't appreciate their own culture enough? And somebody else sees it and thinks it's hot so then they try to run with it like why is it so why is it that black culture is easily taken and blown up because me personally on when i look at it from that aspect like i said you got to look at the hurdles that we have to climb i mean with everything that goes on in the world today even on a racist level of different things like that I don't think we really walk around with a, a racist bone in our body to say, you know what? No, I mean, we pretty much open the door. Not to say that you can steal it, but we've been stole from since day one. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? You can try to take and step into that lane, but, I mean, they still don't do it better than us. You know I mean, I, at the end of the day. What, what about, like, when something's normal for you, and it's something that you see all the time and do all the time. Maybe you don't appreciate it because in your eyes, it's considered something normal that everybody does. But when Correct. somebody out. Jay, you froze up. I think we got some technical difficulties. I'm sitting here like, wait, is it my computer? <laughs> Not the drama, she dead. I'm here. Now he can't talk about me no more because anytime we, we want to meet and he's talking about my phone service and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he's still saying they're looking like Bobo. <laughs> yeah. He's on that 1G. <laughs> he always talking about they got 1G, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him man, where, when, when it's important, where it matters. Okay. Hello. <laughs> it's a good question, though, man. Um, I'm sorry, I'm all messed up. Repeat the question again. So, 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 you know, just the question was, do you, do black people appreciate their culture enough or more than other cultures appreciate their own cultures so that it's easily appropriated? Cause like Sean, you brought up the idea about, you know, you guys are always been welcoming. Black people has always been wel welcoming, right? So that's probably why people see it. Jay brought up the idea, you know, when it's normal, maybe we don't appreciate it as much. But I wouldn't look at it as a, 
we don't appreciate. Right. I mean, we are who we are, you know what I mean? So it's not an appreciation part it's of it. Natural, it's so organic for us. You know what I mean? So it's exactly. So it's not something that I would say we don't look at and we're unappreciative. I mean, it's just who we are. So at that point, like you said, when it comes to the media and stuff like that, I mean, they're the ones who kind of flipping it to, you know, look like, oh, like I said, anybody can step in that lane and, you know, take it and do what they do. But at the end of the day, like I said, I mean, you can try to impersonate it. You can try to join it. But if it's not authentic, like I said, it's only going to last for so long. You know what I mean? And you got to find another way. I think for me personally, I really do. I, I'm I am so grateful and blessed to be uh, born into the culture that I'm born into on a regular basis. I, I mean, and I think that comes with self love, though. That's where mm -hmm. it really starts. I, if everybody knows, and everybody that knows Nay knows that Nay is Jamaican, and I love being Jamaican. I love the fact that I was born in a Jamaican household. I love the fact that I'm real extra with the fact that I love being Jamaican. I love my culture. I love my hey. culture. on a whole as Black people. I love our Black community. I love our Black culture does not it does not negate the fact that i don't love everyone else because i am naturally organically i love people whether you black white blue yellow it don't matter orange it don't matter i love people but yes internally nay as an individual i love i absolutely love from the deepest part of my soul i love being a part of this community a part of this culture as a Jamaican, as a black woman, I love it. And that's just organic. So like, it's not about sitting around thinking, oh, do I really appreciate my, mm -mm. And well, I think everybody would just genuinely know. Well, well let's <laughs> welcome Jay back. Self love from everybody. <laughs> hey, with your one G. Hey. Yeah, with your one G too. With your one G. 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 What, 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 what happened? What happened what is, was um, the Bright House had rolled past and they ran into the pole, and um, they no cut, Bright House, sir. and then it popped back on, huh? They're no longer Bright House. <laughs> um, you know them people. You know them people. Talk about you know them people. <laughs> we were. I was talking about you so much. I had what? all the junk to talk about you. Why? I mean, Things happen. Things happen. You know, things happen. Right. He, done put the, he done put the Teddy Riley over here. Right. <laughs> Y'all ready for that? No, <laughs> yo, you know my comment broke the internet. That's what happened. <laughs> so let me hear y'all. Let me hear your perspective on what Nam said because, like I Run said, you, you know, you were talking about. Maybe because things are so normal, whether or not it's appreciated when you see something all the time and it's just normalized for you, is do you appreciate it as much? Right. No, you don't appreciate it because you consider it to be something normal. It's like coming home and having electricity every day until a hurricane comes. And then when a hurricane comes, you ain't got no electricity. Then you actually see how important that electricity is to you. Or when you have internet and it just cuts off, like in the middle of what you're doing. And then you understand how important that is to be able to do what it is that you need to do. So when when things are normalized, then no, people don't people don't appreciate it as much as they should. Um, and the only people who do appreciate it are the ones that have lost it before and understand that, you know, I'm, I'm happy I got power because that time I didn't. Boy, it was hot and we and we couldn't take. We had to take cold showers or whatever. So then you start to appreciate it when you understand that it's not something that you can have all the time. So that's what I meant by that. But how would you look at it from that well, that perspective? I would say, look at every other culture. Do you think they walk around feeling like, you no, know, maybe they don't appreciate the culture that they're in because we're not trying to infiltrate their the culture? No. Versus no. us not, maybe not having an interest in it, you know what I mean, too much, you know what I mean? 
Do you feel like Hispanic people? They are very proud to be Hispanic. Right. Yeah, and we're proud to be black. I think you you I don't think you can compare like your lights and the food on your yeah. table. I think it comes with that comes from somewhere deep down within. That's like like I was talking about when you were off camp, when you were off having technical difficulties with your one G. <laughs> yeah. I was mentioning I was mentioning how how proud I am as a Jamaican woman. Uh, yeah. Again, like I, I think it just it's innate. It's deep within my soul. Like it's there is not a day that I am I am proud to be who I am. But just, that doesn't really take away from the culture. Like, um, so when I'm saying normal, like the, okay, black women typically have big booties, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's normal, right? Mm -hmm. So to, for other people that might not be normal and that be something, that may be something that they want. But we take that for granted is because because it's normalized in our culture is what I was saying. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get what I you're saying. I can understand that that pathway. Well, we can also flip that and say, okay, well, I guess when it comes down to, you know, the creamy crack with women, black women, perming hair and this mm -hmm. and that, whatever, having to straighten out their hair. You know what I mean? I guess you would say that's kind of on the same type of level. So that being normal, the straight hair being normal? No, like yeah, you said, like how most, I mean, obviously we ain't born with straight hair. You know what I mean? Oh, I, just, I took to that point, I don't know, I'm not a woman, but it maybe it is because maybe they may not appreciate their natural hair like that. Mm -hmm. and they would rather roll with the creamy crack. But my point was like, for an example, with the, the way that Nam and the way you answered the question when it came down to appreciating what we have and who we are. Like I said, I think that's no question. Right. Like I, said, I think we appreciate who we are. But like I said, I don't see us walking around trying to infiltrate other cultures, like how our culture gets infiltrated. You know what I mean? But I don't know if we all appreciate who we are. Well, that's going to be in every race, but talking about the majority, right? I don't know. For the most part, I, I, you think? I think we're proud people, you know what I mean? Uh, due to the circumstances that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and that we've been dealing with, I mean, we're proud people. I mean, you still ain't dealt the right hand. You got to make it do what it do. But do you but, think that being a proud people right now is a new paradigm shift that's just emerging? Because if you look historically, you know, um, uh, you know, with the test where they asked the young, the young girls and young boys to choose the doll that they like. They always chose the white dolls in the past. Do you but think why? now that the pair, well, because they were conditioned that, mm -hmm. you know, their skin color. But that's what it good. was on the market too, though. You know what I mean? That's what was all on the market. You know what I mean? They wasn't having black dolls out there like that. Barbie was, when Barbie came out, since I can remember, Barbie was white. <laughs> Yo, you know what's crazy? Even band-aids were designed, the, um, the, the color of the band-aid was mm -hmm. supposed to be a white person's skin, right? You don't, you don't see a darker color band-aid because that's what it's supposed to look like. The little dots on there is supposed to be like hair or whatever, but it's supposed to look like a white person's skin. So it blends, but it blends in with your skin. Not for us, but it is supposed to blend in with your skin. But do like, that stuff, like you, what I think Nam was just talking about, is conditioning. And it at is. the end of the day, when you go through it, and if you see it enough times, then now it becomes right. It's true. That's what it's supposed to look like. But give me your final thoughts on, and your your final take on the on the whole situation or the question. I want us to start looking at this particular subject on a. Like, I want us to look at it from a different angle. If you're inspired by another culture, be inspired by it. Enjoy it. Embrace it. But give credit to where credit is due. That's my take. I'm with you a thousand percent. Because like I said, I mean, hell. I mean, we all grew up where we grew up at. But hell, I used to watch <laughs> Bruce Lee joints. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hell. He made everybody want to do karate. 
You know what I mean? We already we knew at least in our eyes who was like the headstone of you know karate and stuff right. like that. At least to us, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. At least I can say my generation. You know, Bruce Lee spoke highly of. You know what I mean? But nobody never tried to steal that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Wu Tang did. Man, Wu, -Tang, <laughs> Wu Tang. Wu Tang blessed the culture. Well, they, 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 they did. Pay they, pay they, pay got, they got the biggest probably fan base is probably Asian. You know what I mean? Because why, of why that, is it what they did considered blessing the culture? And not huh? culture appropriation. Why, 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 why do you consider what they did blessing the culture, the Shaolin because, culture? Because they didn't, they didn't never take it and say, "Oh, this is ours." You know what I mean? They paid homage and gave homage to what they were following. You know what I mean? That's the difference there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You ain't get the Asian dude come over here to to say, "Hey, you know what I mean?" Like for example, you want to throw somebody out there, you throw Jen out there for Rough Riders. Jen grew up where? Out there. You know, around a bunch of brothers and stuff like that. Straight New Yorker. You know what I mean? Miami. Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah. He, he may not know anything different, though. Yeah, you're right. But that's what I'm saying. He paid homage, though. He didn't, it wasn't no, um, you know what I mean? And that's why, like I said, all love due to Wu-Tang, because you watch the series. I mean, they pay homage to where they got that whole inspiration. You know what I mean? When it comes down to that whole Shaolin you know, art form and the sound effects and the beats the Rizzo chose and, you know, the whole the whole thing. I mean, you take the symbol and everything, you know what I mean? They never tried to steal or say, hey, this is ours, you know what I mean? we Everybody know that. So to that point, did Kim Kardashian bless the culture with the braids because she never said it was hers, right? Is the media that you said was running with it? The media was running with it. I ain't see that she said anything otherwise, though. So. Oh, sometimes and and no, but she never said anything to say this came from here either. She could have even have said, "Yo, Alicia Keys was rocking this before me. That's who I was inspired by." You know what I mean? You know, like, sometimes they, they in their own lane. To be honest with you, it's true. But, but I think the biggest thing that they get. When it comes to the culture wise, it, of course, you know, you obviously see how they move. You know what I mean? You see who they date, you see the plastic surgery stuff, and it's all triggered usually off of, you know, Listen, when the black woman. Rock and Braves, all of the top designers were having their models on the runway in braids. Botox, lips, yeah. all of that crap. You know before, what I mean? Before it wasn't even accepted. From before that, it wasn't accepted. Before you even get into the full lips and all that, but um, hey, my soup coolers came natural. I ain't have to inject <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> you. Know what I mean? <laughs> but okay, I, I feel you. I see where you're coming from, but we got to wrap it up. Um. Sean gave his final thoughts. My final thoughts is just, I just feel like people should have to pay respect. You should pay respect to uh, where it came from. And it's okay to enjoy other cultures. Just pay your respect. And I'm going to let Nate take us out. Just pay your respect. Thank you all for joining us today in another episode of Debate That. Make sure you stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, mind your business, stay in your lane. Go home with your family and debate that. Bye. See, I had a vision. Young adolescent with no pot to piss in To beat the system and to feed the mission You ain't gotta see for your ears to listen Just pure ambition to come where I'm from Feel a weight by the ton to do what has never been done Need a whole lot of hope 
mixed with some patience, cause struggle's no jokes. I seen a whole lot of downs. Weight of the world on my shoulders, real talk, that's a whole lot of pounds. So I feel it with rapping, and you can tell that I'm passionate, and everything that I do is on purpose, there is no accident. So this one's for the culture. For the I got my eyes on a kid with a gun in the holster. Gun in the holster. Got me screaming, don't do it. Don't go if you lose when you aim and you shoot it. Don't shoot I both sides. Watch mama cry. Family hurting, cause you could've died. Brother locked up, emotions down. Rather you dead than six feet underground. I swear, for real, that I'm my brother's keeper. For the hell and back to reach him. Cause life's your biggest teacher. I swear, yeah, yeah. I see both sides, watch mama cry. Family hurting, cause you could've died. We just need a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope, yeah. And this one's for the culture, yeah, yeah. We just need a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope, yeah. And this one's for the culture, yeah, yeah. We just need a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope, yeah. And this one's for the culture, yeah, yeah. We just need a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope, yeah. This one for the culture, yeah, yeah.